Good morning everyone. This is the role play activity on the chapter Mother's Day by JP PSC. We have taken a particular scene from the chapter. Here is a brief of what happened before this scene. Mrs. Pearson and Mrs. Fitzgerald are the neighbors and Mrs. Fitzgerald is fortune teller by profession. We came to know that Mrs. Pearson is not treated well by her family. Even though she does all the household works and try to keep her children and husband happy mrs fitzgerald is not happy by learning this and wants to teach pearson family a lesson so she told mrs pearson to exchange the soul though mrs pearson is reluctant at first but eventually she agrees after that mrs fitzgerald who is in the mrs pearson body starts her at and the very first person on her radar was Doris, daughter of Mrs. Pearson, followed by Cyril, the son of Pearson's, George, spouse of Mrs. Pearson. After teaching everyone a lesson by not doing their household chores and exposing very harsh truth about them, Mrs. Pearson, who is in Mrs. Fitzgerald's body, came to see all of this and is very shocked. Now there will be an interaction between Mrs. Pearson in Mrs. Fitzgerald's body and members of the family. Just look down for a minute, I suppose, Mrs. Fitzgerald? Well, yes, I suppose so, George. George? Oh, I'm sorry. Does it really matter? Your name is George, isn't it? Oh, come on, isn't it bad enough without her calling you George? No tea, getting called open papers in number of friends. And poor George is having crying her eyes out upstairs because of you. Oh dear, I ought to have known. You ought to have known? But I ought you to have known? Nothing to do with you, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Look, this is our family members, so perhaps you'll excuse us. I won't excuse you, Mr. George Pearson. Next time a friend or neighbor comes to see me, you better say them something like good evening, hello, how are you doing? Don't just march in and sit down. They are bad manners and it's highly, highly expected from you. No, it's alright. It isn't alright. We'll have some decent manners in this house or else I would like to know why. Well, what? I guess I told you to do something when a friend or neighbor comes. Because of you, my home is as worse as hell today. Oh, really? Why don't you go to a club tonight? Special night. They'll be waiting for you to have a good luck. Go on, don't disappoint them, Mrs. Pompey Ompey Pearson. That's right. Make me look silly in front of an outsider. Go on, don't mind me. My goodness, poor Doris has been crying her eyes out. Getting the neighbors in to see the fun. Alright, let her hear. What's the matter with you? Have you gone balmy or what? If you shout at me like that again, I'll slap your big fat silly face. Oh, what did you say? Same thing that you heard Mrs. Pompey Ompey Pearson. An awkward silence. Oh no no no, please Miss Fitzgerald. Either I'm off my jump or you do. How do you mean no no please Mrs. Fitzgerald? Look, you are Mrs. Fitzgerald. So why are you telling yourself to stop when you're not doing anything? Tell her to stop. Then there'd be sense in it. Look, you must be taken. Say that again, George Pearson. All right, all right, all right. Doris enters left slowly, looking miserable. She's still wearing the wrap. Mrs. Pearson sits on the settee. Hello, Doris. Hello, Mrs. Fitzgerald. I thought you were going out today with Charlie Spinstein. What's that to do with you? Stop that! No! It's alright. No, it isn't alright. I won't have a daughter of mine talking to anybody like that. Doris, answer Mrs. Fitzgerald properly or else go upstairs to your room. Don't look at me. I give it up. I just give it up. Well, answer her, Doris. I was going out with Charlie's friends tonight, but I've called it off. Oh, 
What a pity, dear. Why have you? If you must know, my mother has been going on and making me feel miserable and saying he's got bhakti and is half witted. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. Mrs. Fitzgerald, I'll manage my family. You manage yours. Taking her off now. Are you, Annie? They are waiting for you at the club, George. Don't forget. And Doris, you don't start crying again. Now that's enough. Quite enough. George and Doris stare at her bewildered. Now listen, you two. I want to have a private talk with Mrs. Fitz. Miss Pearson. So I will be object if you will leave us alone for a few minutes. I will let you know once we have done. Go on, please. I promise you won't regret it. There is something that only I can deal with. I'm glad somebody can, because I can't. Come on, Doris. George and Doris exit left. After this scene, Mrs. Fizzler took Mrs. Pearson to the left of the table and asked her to change back again. Mrs. Pearson questioned her as she was teaching a good lesson to the family. But Mrs. Fizzerell could not able to see her family in discomfort. After this, they changed and became their proper personalities. Mrs. Fizzerell continued to warn her that if she doesn't go rough, then it will all get wasted. Meanwhile, George, Doris and Cyril filed in through the doorway and started looking apprehensively at Mrs. Pearson. After this, the conversation started, but now the tone of the family was completely changed after the tough session by Mrs. Fitzgerald. They didn't order Mrs. Pearson, but asked her. And this good, sweet and soft conversation led to the end of the story. We hope that you all liked our play. Thank you and have a nice day.